I, I don't think I don't think it's that cut and dry. I really don't. Because I mean, if you think about it, dude, we have to get to a point where whatever is reborn into that fucking baby from Historia. That it has to happen. I mean, whatever ends up allowing that to be the the rebirth has to happen. May, may, here, here's here's a fundamental shaking, a found a fundamental foundation shaking idea. What if that's just a normal fucking baby and nobody gets reborn? <laughs> what if nobody gets reborn and the cycle actually breaks and this isn't a cyclical uh, series that this timeline just ends finitely? What if what if they broke the fucking wheel? Shout out to Daenerys Targaryen. That, holy shit. <laughs> that would be fucking crazy. I don't know. You know, this, this is one of those chapters that, um, I, from what I understand, I think it's it for Aaron. I think it's GG. Like, I think Aaron got his head blown off. And he's pretty much like a, uh, as they're saying here, he was already dead. Uh, ended up in that place with Mirror, just like the previous Titans. Um, I, the only thing about that is that Aaron, when he saw a Mirror, he was uh, seemingly as conscious as uh, Zeke was. And as you saw the other dead Titans, uh, former Titans, they were not conscious. They were like, just corpses that had to be reactivated. And yeah, I mean... <laughs> dog shit ending. I can't believe the author of this manga gonna end this manga just like some dog shit shown in like Naruto ended. This manga was amazing ever since it came out. It was mind blown. So many unforgettable moments and shows I was getting just to end in such a dog shit way. I really hope the last two mangas will make something happen. There's no way in hell you easily stop rumbling and killing the strongest titan in high school because of some dog shit friendship. <laughs> listen, man. Um, listen. 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 The writing was on the wall. That there were many shonen tropes that were going to happen. If you were paying attention for the last 10 chapters. It was going to be self-evident. That Isayama is going to use shonen tropes. He used convenient friendship. Uh, convenient re uh, gaining of friendships. Uh, protagonists that should be dying. That typically would have died in the past. Conveniently escaping death. Um having one pro like pretty much main protagonist die every few chapters to keep the uh listener or the, the the audience um not completely fucking losing it about you know bad writing and convenient uh escapes haunt um the captain mcgaff mcgaff uh the the eldian and the like Shadits and McGaff, the Eldian and the Marlian um, captains. Um, and then when you had when you had Zeke and and, and and Armin in the same place, you knew it was going to be some talk no jutsu shit occurring. You had the two most audibly abled characters at that point in the series sitting by each other, the two most convincing in lip service characters in the entire series maybe ever i mean our would be up there too but those two were pretty much the biggest i think you should have knew what it was at that point i think realistically talk no juice was going to be a big part of this and i know it's you know some people thought it was going to be the fucking greatest it's going to be like the, the first series like sub to subvert talk no jutsu and maybe ever <laughs> and yeah People want to say Gabby. Um, I don't know people are bring back to Gabby. Gabby, a lot of people don't want to believe Gabby killed Aaron. Gabby is the fucking Arya Stark 
of the series. It's just that simple. The cool moments are meant to go to Gabby. It's just that fucking simple. If it's true that Gabby, a little prick brat that instantly built that instantly build by thousand plus. These some of these people are fucking stupid. Can kill the amazing main character, which has been built by many. These are some fucking dumb motherfuckers. Uh, been built by many events, many many events in the story with just that one bullet contained thousand plot armor. How does that? Get, it would be not plot armor if he survived a fucking bullet to the head without any kind of reaction time and nothing else. Just getting shot from the fucking like side, like the blind side. That would be plot armor. The story confirmed Aaron is still alive, but most will agree about how they're fighting Emir to somehow some people are missing how Emir probably the resistance recently not Aaron. In fact it turned out she fought them the same manner she was observing Ram Ramsey die in 131. So now like she was the one who got the time to that city not Aaron. I think Emir definitely has a connection to everything that's occurred. Like, I mean even them being allowed to revive those fuckers. Like I know Aaron said oh you guys can come kill me if you want. I think Emir has controlled all this shit. People are just like suggesting theories at this point. If he didn't go to Historia's place and meet her baby, she can reactivate the Roman game because the baby's world blood in it. But that's just my theory. So he's saying that with Zeke being dead, he could just like touch Historia and do it instead. Okay, whatever. That, that's that, that's not gonna happen. But okay, yeah. I mean, like this dude said, that's not that's not even fucking. People are just throwing up ideas, man. Aaron is fucking dead. I think it, I think Aaron would do something else. I think the, the spirit, the body, the will of Aaron will do. At least one more pretty major event. But Aaron himself is fucking dead. I mean, he's he's gone. And I think Aaron... I mean, everybody knew Aaron was going to fucking die. I mean, that's just... That, that... That that was pretty much foretold. TBH, I think the last panel is Grisha holding baby Aaron right after his birth. We've never seen any sentimental interactions between the two as father and son. I mean, when's the best time to show a happy moment of one's life and the conclusion of one's death? I think it would be kind of poetic if that's how it ended and it would show the start of Aaron's return to her freedom with just, a, with just three simple words. Aaron said the last panel for uh, Isayama said the last panel for the manga is You Are Free, symbolizing that Historia's child will be the first to feel the freedom. I, I think it's Historia's kid, but it would be some Isayama shit if it was Aaron instead, and it's an alternate universe a la um, chap, uh, part six in JoJo's where everybody born after. Pushi dies, which if you haven't, <laughs> I just spoiled part six. I'm sorry. If you haven't watched part six, I, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll hopefully put a spoiler alert there. But um, everybody after Pucci dies is in a new universe that's free of Pucci, of Dio, of the Joe Star curse. They're in a free world. So maybe after Emir loses, if that's possible, which I don't know how Emir would lose, but. But I don't even know how she lost right now. I don't know how the rumbling got stopped. I, I don't. How do you have that many Titans? What? what just stop synthesizing the Titans. If they're synthesized via her founding Titan. Just stop fucking synthesizing Titans. I don't fucking understand how she lost this. And, and, and <laughs> what was my point? Oh, yeah. So, like, maybe after she loses, uh, Aaron will be reborn. The first one to be reborn in this new universe that's free of uh, the blood lost. I could read theories on this motherfucker forever, bro. Um, <laughs> this this is little, regardless of how you feel about this ending and it being kind of shown in esque. It's this is a hell of a chapter. Like on 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 face value, like, and you gotta understand this for me. I would have said the chapter where Obito is revealed to be Obito, uh, or Toby is revealed to be Obito. I would have said it was a hell of a chapter too because that was a fucking that was an amazing. Like sets of events, like just crazy shit, all like culminating to this grand fight finale. I would say it was a hell of a chapter two. Now, was it a well written chapter? Probably not, but like it was still an amazing experience. Um, so yeah, uh, that that was, that was fucking incredible, bro. That was fucking incredible. Um, I'll give a chapter to eleven out of ten. Is it going to probably result in some shonen shit? Apparently there's two left, so April will be the last one if there's no hiatus in between. Um, is it is it satisfying? It's probably not going to be satisfying to many people, I think. I, I, I'm i pretty sure that satisfaction won't be had. And I think that if you had Isayama, you know, do like a, a, a world tour before 
this manga dropped a la <laughs> you guys are gonna hate this Benny off and Weiss uh <laughs> They would have said it should have been very unsatisfying, or he would have said it's very unsatisfying quality. They did, um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, she she allowed this this comment right here goes in and tells you this was the closest she could give him for freedom. Like she wanted her life back, but this was the best she could give him. Yeah, this is the best freedom she could give. Him. Just let them win. But yeah, I think um I think that the next chapter will uh will be I think the next chapter will be a mirrors. Like if I had to make a prediction, um here's 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 it. Here here's it, here's the prediction. I'm gonna end on this because it's gonna go on for another twenty minutes if I let it. The next chapter we're going to see towards the end we're going to see Historia and her kid the majority of the chapter will be dedicated towards Emir Emir's going to have her moment to speak to, to I know I know and you can say in essence pretty much the entire series has been her will so maybe that won't happen but I think it's going to be her chapter to give her opinion I think Aaron's going to also con contribute um, one more time something significant and I think Levi is going to break down and start fucking crying after finally completing his life's work. But it's going to feel unsatisfying. Those are my four or five predictions. Uh, I could keep on going. I think you guys should read more about this. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, I really don't know. The, an incredible chapter that I think it will take dozens and dozens of um rereads to appreciate i think zeke went out i think if you could honestly give me the the uh the the premise that 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 uh zeke is that motherfucker you know i don't know how to put it he's not the main protagonist um he's not even the guy who set in motion the events that have occurred he's not Madara you know like his his overarching desire to reach whatever his version of the infinite Tsukuyomi is that that's not what drives the series but in some way it feels like Zeke was was the um was the most important character in the series at times um I don't I don't think I'll have any sad moments like really just forlorn and damn near to the point of crying moments as, as of what I had with uh with just not Historia but um Hodge I don't I, don't, I mean I don't I don't like Zeke that much I like Zeke I don't like him that much but yeah he went out he went out good he went out very well I thought Isayama gave him a good conclusion and for the first time I think Zeke finally felt um answers to his to his problems so that's, that's that was a good series. That, that was a good. This, this was a good series conclusion. Um, I, I, he could he could go a couple of different ways after this point, but I think it's kind of clear where he wants to end this at. And I think I know where I need to end this at. Hope you all enjoy. Uh, like, rate, share, subscribe, whatever. Um, yeah. Please don't. <laughs> if this ends with Aaron dying, or Arm and suicide being off the stage, or Emir getting her way or whatever. Don't go fucking at people on Twitter and all that bullshit. And if you're that fucking loony, you need to be putting a fucking saying something. I'm not fucking allowed to use Twitter, you fucking crazies. Do not fucking attack anybody on goddamn Twitter. You fucking